Hey guys, Shane here. Welcome to the third installment of our Dens Week, the Christmas special on my channel. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at painting up a member of Camp Group Hansen. More in particular, a member of the 1st SS Panzer uh, Division, who was attached to Camp Group Hansen. And this figure is from Mantis Miniatures, which is a 135th scale resin model. And it is sculpted based on a very famous character from a German newsreel. So he is based on um, a member of Camp Group Hansen who took part at the ambush and the partial destruction of elements of the 14 Cavalry Group on the road between Recht and Pote, Belgium, during the Ardennes Offensive. So there are a lot of uh, theories on what this man is wearing. So most people actually seem to think he's wearing a, a, a waterproof poncho, but in fact he's actually wearing a, a nerdy war smock. However, the sculptor is actually sculpted more like a poncho than a smock. So that's going to be what we're going to paint it up as. But it's also going to give us a few opportunities to try to paint up some kind of satin or reflective materials as these are meant to be waterproofs. So grab your paints and your brushes and let's get started. So I've already pre-primed this model with surface primer grey. And now I'm going to start laying down the first coat for his poncho and that's going to be with model layer black green. This is a somewhat opaque colour so it's going to take at least a coat or two to build this up to a nice even layer. I've already painted up his face and a link to how I paint faces will be popping up on your right right side of your screen right now or your top right corner and I've just masked it off with a bit of blue tack. I'm just going to slowly build this up. My airbrush is about 15 psi and my airbrush paint even though it's pre tinned for airbrushing as model air can be sprayed directly out of the bottle I've just put literally a drop of thinner into my into my cup just to improve the flow ever so slightly. However, it does mean then you have to build up the layers one or two coats. Just allow your coats to dry in between each layer and you should be fine. So with the poncho base coated, now it's time to base these trousers. And for that we're going to be using model layer German grey. So the trousers he, he, he is wearing are thought to be uh, homemade trousers based on the Italian camouflage style ca combat trousers. And I'm going to paint these up grey because uh, I kind of have the idea that these might have been uh, his own version of rain gear or, or wet gear. So I'm painting it up to be more like an oil skin. Uh, this might not be necessarily true, but that's just how I'm going to paint mine up. In the actual footage of this Panzer Grenadier, he's shown that one of his trouser legs is torn and you can actually see the P-Dot camouflage of his issued combat trousers underneath it. However, the sculptor from Mantis did not sculpt this in. There's a figure based on this chap as well from Alpine and they have sculpted him in with more of the details including they've sculpted his smock actually as a smock rather than a poncho. So there's these trousers based in. So now I'm going to start blocking in the camouflage smock that's actually visible at the edges of his poncho and for that we're going to use German camouflage orange ochre. I've tinned this slightly, I've literally just dipped the, the tip of my brush into some clean water and whatever water gets picked up by the brush I've mixed into my paint on my palette and I'm going to build this up in several tin layers. Once again this is a somewhat tin opaque paint so to get a nice realistic finish you do have to put a layer or two. Just take your time, slowly build it up and you'll get a nice effect. I'm slowly painting in the sleeves of his uh, P-Doc camouflage smock and I'm just being very careful here not to get any of the ochre on his poncho. I really want to avoid doing that. I don't want to have to go back and clean things up. It just kills the momentum of a project. So 
be a little bit disciplined with your brush control here. So with the smock based, now I'm going to take some light brown from model colour and I'm going to paint in the handle for his combat knife that's clipped into the collar of his poncho. And I'm going to put at least two very thin coats um, onto the handle and once you put on a coat or two it really pops out then and it draws, draws the eye to this detail. Now I'm going to take some Citadel Abaddon Black, which is a nice satin or semi-gloss black colour. I'm going to start painting in all the black leather details, such as his white straps, his belt, his boots, as well as the holster for his P-38 pistol. I've also painted in his helmet and the head scar for the balaclava. I forgot to film this, so the helmet's painted in German extra dark green both from Phileo and then the scarf is painted in German field grey. Now I'll be very careful here, especially with the white straps, these are very delicate details. There's not a lot of definition between the white straps and the um, poncho, so I'll be very careful here with a, a fine tip brush and I'm slowly just tracing uh, the white straps here. It's very easy to, for this colour to go everywhere and I've also slightly tinned my colour as well. Now he's painting in his Luger or should I say his P38 holster. I switched up to a slightly larger brush, this is a, a number 3 I think. The brushes I'm using are all from the Windsor Newton Cotman range which are a lovely set of synthetic acrylic paint brushes. They're really nice, have great uh, point retention which is very important for figure painting and especially for some of the intricate jobs that we're going to be doing in this tutorial. I'm just going to paint in his, uh, his boots. I'm not going to be too particularly um, careful here, I'm just going to apply it relatively thickly, just not too thick to the point where I'm smothering the detail and I'm just going to be careful not to get onto his trousers. A lot of the detail on his boots are going to be covered anyway when we come to mount this guy on his diorama base, which we'll be following in the very near future. So I'm going to take some German grey. I'm going to paint in the tool case for his MG42. You could easily paint this in in Abaddon Black too if you wish, but I just want this to have a slightly different uh, leather effect, just to break it up ever so slightly. So this is kind of optional, you can either paint it in black or in my case in grey. I'm going to take some model layer gun grey and we're going to start painting in the metallics. So I'm going to start painting in the Browning high power pistol, so it's not a cult, cult 1911, a lot of people seem to misidentify his, uh, the pistol he's carrying as a, a cult, but actually in fact it's a Browning high power pistol. So I'm going to paint this in, I haven't tinned this paint, it's already pre-tinned for uh, airbrushing, so it suits our needs as figure painters and brush painters very, uh, very, very nicely indeed. It might take a coat or two in certain places, however, as long as we're a bit patient we can build up a very nice metal effect. And also be very careful that we don't get the gunmetal colour on any area we don't want. Normally with an acrylic paint, if you paint outside the lines, you can merely wipe it away with a damp brush. If you do this with a metallic, well most metallic colours in acrylic and other types of mediums have metal flakes inside them. So even if you wipe it away, you leave a shiny residue, which is the, the remnants of those metal flakes. So try to keep your... Um, Keep inside the lines when you're painting here, or you'll have to come back and touch up any area you miss. I'm just going to paint in his belt buckle, again using the gunmetal. 
Now this is a very bright colour but we're going to be toning this back down uh, in a few minutes with some washes. And then some of the support hooks and mounting hooks for these Y-straps. I've switched down to a double zero long bristle brush again from the Cotman range to do this. This is some delicate work and we need to make sure we're using the right brushes for those jobs. I'm also going to paint in the small um, circular ring that's in the centre of the Y-straps which is like a steel ring that mounts all the various leather components together. It's a very uh, delicate detail but it's a very nice detail nonetheless. So now I'm going to make a mixture of Vallejo model layer metallic black and our gunmetal colour. I'm going to mix them roughly 50-50 and this is going to be the base colour for our ammunition links that are, is draped around our grenadier's neck. So I want this colour to be a little bit darker from the other metallic fixtures we've put onto the model so far. I don't want it to be the same colour or it'll just get a bit boring and overpowering so I just darkened it with the metallic black. If you don't have metallic black you can just mix normal black into it too and we'll do the same job. And I'm going to very very carefully paint in this colour onto the ammunition belt across your shoulders and neck. I really do not want to get this on any areas that we've painted in in different colours. Take your time, keep an eye on where the point of your brush is, is actually directed towards. It seems a bit silly to say that, but um, often when we're painting I find, and I, I do this sometimes myself, we're not actually watching where the point of the brush is going towards, we're just like picking the point on the model rather than the brush to the model. So you have to make sure that you're not accidentally painting in areas you don't mean to. So with the cases painted in, now we're going to take some Citadel Hashut Copper or whatever the hell they want to call it because Citadel can't name their paints normally and we're going to tin that colour down ever so slightly and we're going to start painting in the actual bullets. So this is a nice sedued kind of copper paint so it will we'll draw your eye to it without it being overpowering and I'm going to be using a double zero long bristle brush again for this job just to give me more control and to allow me to paint in these very fine details. I've also braced the model and my hands against my workbench to, to eliminate any shake. Now I'm going to take some oily steel from Model Color and I'm going to be very very careful with this and I'm gently going to paint it in to some of the metal fixtures of the combat knife just to make that detail pop. So now I'm going to take some flat brown and with this colour we're going to start painting in some of the wooden furniture on the MG42 such as the stock and the pistol grip. I've only tinned this paint ever so slightly, I want it to go down somewhat thick but just try to keep it as smooth a surface as possible. I'm going to take some red leather and I'm going to mix it into our flat brown roughly 50-50 and I'm going to make it a deep leather colour and that's going to be the base colour for his sling as well as some of the leather reinforcing tabs on the white straps. And 
here we have our letter details put in. And now the model is ready for its shading. And for that, as always, we're going to be using washes to achieve this. And we're going to be applying Citadel's Agrat Earthshade to all the non-metallic areas of the model. So my reason for using washes, and in particular acrylic washes, is one, the drying time is very fast, which in the type of environment I'm in at the moment, so winter in Ireland gets very moist and damp, and no, and um, so drying times can take a long time, so using oils potentially can take absolute weeks for them to dry fully, whereas at least with acrylics, you put them in front of a heater, they'll dry pretty quickly, as long as you don't melt your model. The other reason is, but one, they're very easy to use, but also they have a very minute micro texture. And it gives a nice impression of grime as well as fabric textures. As after all, we are painting materials and just like in one is to one scale, they should have a small texture. And in scale, it can be very hard to replicate that, especially in 35th scale, without it being overpowering or out of scale. And I find these washes do that job really nicely. So when you're applying it, be very careful not to allow it to pool in any one area. Anytime you see it building up, clean off your brush and go back to that area that's pooling and just work, work it back into the model and dissipate any of build up of wash. If you miss anything and it dries, you'll get a big blotchy finish of where that build up dried and you really do not want that. It'll take away from your model and you may have to start from scratch. So you have to be a little bit diligent while using these type of washes, and actually any wash for that matter. So now I'm going to take some Null Oil, again from Citadel, which is a, a very greasy or oily wash, and I'm going to work this into all the metallics. In hindsight, I really should have allowed the Agrat's Earthshade to dry before I applied some of the, this metallic wash because in certain places it bled together. It's not a big issue, so if it happens to you, don't panic. It, it won't destroy your model or take away from the end result, but it just made it a little bit tricky in times. I'm also going to apply naturally to his Browning High Power Pistol. I'm going to, and also very carefully, I'm going to work it in to the machine gun belt and the entrenching tool as well. see our models begin to take uh, take shape and slowly come to life. So there we have our model washed. So I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours and then we're going to start working on our highlights. So I'm going to apply the first highlight layer to his camouflage smock in preparation for the P dot camouflage. And we're going to go back to our base colour, which is German Camouflage Orange Ochre. And I'm going to trace this along all the leading edges. So the, like the, where the, his tunic ends, the tops of creases. And I'm going to leave the washed areas uh, in the recesses, so deep in cr um, the creases of his uniform. As well as the areas where one set of clothing meets another, just to give us a boundary line. Just help the eye... Um, distinguish between the various details that we're painting in. I'm keeping my paint ever so slightly thinned, again just literally the tip of the brush in some water and then mixed into your paint. So just the tip. smock highlighted now we're going to put our first highlight layer on his trousers and for that we're going to go back to our German grey and we're going to work it into his Italian style combat trousers there's a lot of flat surfaces on both his trousers and the poncho so we're going to get some very interesting techniques here to try to highlight these in a way that looks convincing without it being overly stark or overexposed the trick here is to keep your paint somewhat thinned. Now since we're using a model hair colour for brush painting, you really don't need to thin it any more than it already is because it's, it's pre-tinned in the bottle. However, very small amount of paint on your brush and slowly build it up. We kind of want this, these coats to be somewhat translucent, allowing the preceding layer to be somewhat visible or even allowing us just to blend it back and make both the two layers 
come as come together as one. The only thing with this is it takes time. There's no fast way to do this, unfortunately. That's one of the reasons why this video is 50 minutes long. It is, for the most part, in real time. And you can see that it just takes a little bit of time to build these colours up. And I'm just picking out areas that are pronounced. Again, the tops of creases. Uh, any areas where the material is pulled taut or tight across, like, across the wearer. Um, in that case, then there'll be no shadow. We just like hitting it. Since I have uh, German Grey, I'm also going to give the machine gun toolbox a little bit of a highlight, just along the leading edges. So now we're going back to our black green, and we're going to give the smock, or should I say the, the waterproof poncho, its first highlight layer. Again, I'm just doing it directly out of the bottle. I've switched to a, a rather large brush. I'm actually switched to a number four now. And we're going to start painting this into actually most of the areas. There's not a lot of creasing on his poncho from the way it's draped over his body. So we're going to be painting in this color into most areas. But again, thin layers and slowly work it up. If you want the areas to look brighter, just come back after a few minutes and apply another layer and slowly work it up and you don't have to make any drastic highlights that way, and it becomes very realistic. So with the first highlight on this, the poncho laid, now we're going to make a very simple highlight for his tunic and his uh, face scarf. So we're going to take some German Feel Grey from Vallejo and mix in a small amount of German Camo Beige. Roughly 60 to 30 percent or 60 to 40 percent, uh, 60 being the darker colour. I'm just going to mix this up with my palette. You can do this by eye, you can make it as dark or as light as you wish. And also it's very important once you mix colours together that you put a little bit of water into them. It tends to get a bit thicker once you mix two paints together for some reason. So just thin it down ever so slightly, again with a little bit of water. I'm switching again to a double zero brush. and I'm going to start tracing in around his headscarf or his balaclava just to give it a little bit of depth and being very careful not to paint into any areas especially not his face it get very tricky to clean these things up so just um, take your time and just keep an eye on where the point of your brush is pointing
just going to take this colour and paint in the small visible collar from his actual tunic and um, that's visible just underneath both his smock and his poncho it's a detail that you may not see on, on camera but it is there and it will be visible if you come close enough to the model so best uh, pick it out too So I'm going to take some extra dark camo green from Filejo and I'm going to give his helmet a bit of a highlight. So how I'm going to apply this paint is, it's somewhat like a dry brush, however I am not wiping the paint off my brush. I'm just putting a small amount of paint onto my brush and then I'm doing like applying it like a dry brush. It gives me a little bit of a texture and makes it look a bit worn. So now we're going back to our second highlight for his poncho. And I'm going to take some Panzer Aces German Tanker Uniform number 1 and I'm going to mix some of the black green together. How stark you want this is totally up to you. I tend to make it a kind of a subdued highlight, about roughly 40% uh, of the brighter colour to 60% of the darker, and take it from there. Again, you can add more or less uh, however way you're inclined to do it. And again, once you mix it together, make sure you put a little bit of water into it just to thin it down. details so any of the areas where there's a rise or along the edge of his poncho just to define that line again keep your paint thin very thin layers allow it to be almost transparent it does mean that we have to come back again and again to build up these layers however the effect is very nice I don't want to go too heavy or it'll be too stark and we land up with a completely different color also these slightly more pronounced highlighting techniques that we will be doing as we apply layer after layer because the colour will become lighter and lighter with each subsequent layer it gives us a kind of rubberized effect which is perfect for a waterproof smock and that's what we're going to be at least what I'm painting this up as it'd be a different ball game if we're painting it up as a, an early pattern SS camouflage smock which if you're painting the Alpine Miniatures version of this little figure here, that's why I'd recommend you to paint that up as. But this seems to be more of a, a waterproof uh, garment, and that's what I'm going to paint mine up as. And I'm just slowly building this up. It takes time. Unfortunately, this is a bit more of an involved figure to paint. It's a simple figure to paint at a first glance, but it actually becomes a very interesting challenge just to slowly work up our layers. So it's a very good test piece for getting our layer discipline down. I'm just working up in certain areas. Um, areas where the material is taut and there's no creasing, I'm going to really focus this lighter colour into those areas because they're going to be reflecting light the most. If you're ever unsure which areas to highlight, hold your model at 90 degrees to your light as in directly have the light directly above them and any area where the light bounces or reflects, that is where you paint in your highlight layer. And this is known as a 12 o'clock shadow or senate highlighting. It's a very simple way if you're ever unsure where to begin. I'm going to make up a very quick mixture for highlighting his trousers. I'm going to take some of our German grey and then I'm going to mix some Filejo Model Air light grey into it. Similar mixture ratio, 60% um, of the darker to 40% of the lighter. Again, you can add or take from that as much as you wish if you find it's too dark or too bright for your own personal tastes. And it's going to be exactly the same discipline for painting in his trousers. Again, there's not many creasing on his trousers, a lot of um, kind of like flat surfaces. So we're going to be painting this colour into a, a lot of this area. And anywhere then we paint it in, we just feather it out by just uh, catching the edges of it and working it back into the darker colour. And then it makes it a very seamless colour transition, which you'll see me doing here again and again.
So now I'm just going to take a little bit more light grey and mix it into our previous mixture just to lighten it again and we're going to start working this colour up on the tops of some of the creases. I just felt it needed an extra layer of highlighting just to give a bit more 3D quality to it. It was looking a bit flat otherwise. And again I'm going to thin my paint, add a little bit of water, it's very important when we're doing this type of highlighting and edge highlighting that we keep our paint thin or it'll be far too stark and it'll look very unconvincing. And once again I'm just going to follow the areas where I feel the light is going to be hitting the most intense areas. And you can see all the creases beginning to pop now on these trousers. So there's our highlighting done on these trousers. So now we can start working on the very first stages of his p -dot camouflage. So we're going to put down the first layer of blotches using German camouflage black brown from Model Air, or should I say Model Color. So I have a, a more in-depth video on how I do p -dot camouflage, so a link to that will be on your top right. So the first trick to, with this is keep in mind that other colors have to go in here too. So don't put too many big blotches of one particular colour at a time or you'll find that you'll have no space for the other colours that have to go in. So I'm just going to put in relatively small blotches of black brown onto his smock and I'll keep my pin, my, my pin, I'm keeping my paint thin here. It has to be quite thin. I can't afford for it to have a raised quality because if the paint goes in thick it'll have a texture. We have to give the impression that this is a printed material. So keep your paint very thin. I'm using a double zero brush for this with a very fine point. And I'm just putting a small amount of paint on my brush at any one time. So now we're going to start adding in our second layer of blotches, which is going to be done with German Camo Bright Green, again from Vallejo Model Color. How would I do the, the second color in the pattern is I tend to keep the bright green close enough, if not sometimes even interlocking with the brown blotches. Now this color is quite bright and quite light, which rhymes and is a bit of a tongue twister for some reason. <laughs> but on camera this doesn't seem to be um, too pronounced but uh, in person it's actually very noticeable but however don't be too concerned that the colors are very stark we're going to be using a glaze to weather and tone all this back down 
later in the tutorial. So same as before, I'm leaving some of the beige area showing through or some of the uh, orange ochre area showing through and then I'm somewhat interlocking the green blotches with the brown blotches just to kind of get them working together. Again, make sure you have a fine point on your brush. Make sure your hands are supported. I've braced my hands against my workbench again to kind of eliminate the, the natural shake in my hands. And I'm just putting again a small amount of paint on my brush at a time. Just a little bit, just enough to do a blotch or two. I can always come back and get more paint as I need it. You must be patient for this. So there are our main blotches put in. Now it's time to start adding in the dots. And for this, we're going to apply our dots into the brown areas first, going back to our German Camo um, Orange Ochre. And I've switched down to a triple zero brush here. It's a very fine point of brush indeed, and it's perfect for jobs like this. And I'm literally just going to put a couple of dots into each blotch. And then keeping my paint somewhat thinned, I don't want it too um, too over tinned. If it's too tinned, it'll turn into a wash and it will flow out of the brush and it will undo all your work. So I've just put a tiny amount of water into it and I've put only a small amount of paint onto my brush at any one time. And I'm just going to pick out all of the brown blotches with the orange ochre. And that's going to be our first layer of dots. So there are, is our first layer of dots put into the brown areas and now we're going to start applying dots into the green areas. And for that we're going to be using cork brown in the model colour range and exactly the same as how we did the orange ochre. Now we're going to start applying this colour into the green. Again, a fine tipped brush, just a little bit of paint and very, very slightly tinned. Once the dots on the green areas are done, we're going to go back to our bright green and our German black brown and we're going to start painting uh, those dots of both colours into the areas that we left in the original orange ochre. And that's going to bring our camera flash pattern together and once that's done, our camera flash pattern and our P-Dot camo is complete. This brings a, I always find this camouflage pattern brings a lovely splash of colour and interest to a model. I'm, I'm quite a big fan of P-Dot Camo and it's quite simple to do too. It's not as complex as the Falschermaker Splinter Cam is. That's a very much more involved camouflage pattern. And I will be doing more German Camo and other Allied Forces camouflage patterns in the near future as well. So there we have the Camo pattern all done. Ready to go on to the next step. 
So I'm going to take some of the black brown that we have on our palette and I'm going to start giving the leather its first highlight. The trick here is to paint the black brown into the center of all the leather straps and panels and leaving the darker color in the recesses. I'm also going to trace the edge of the machine gun um, spare parts pouch just to have that pop. And then I'm going to carefully do the same for the back of the belt, the Y straps, as well as tracing the edges of his P38 pistol holster. So I'm also going to take this colour and highlight his boots. It's going to be a pretty rough highlight, I'm just going to pick out some of the more pronounced details. I don't go too crazy weathering or um, highlighting boots as I tend to weather over them, so a lot of this is going to be lost anyway. I'm also going to take some of our cork brown and I'm going to wash, water it down quite heavily and I'm going to apply it like a wash over the wooden stock and pistol grip of the weapon and that's going to give us um, the first elements of our wood green texture. It's a very simple way of doing it and it doesn't it's not too involved you can do it quite quickly. I'm going to take some red leather and highlight the um, leather strap or should I say the leather sling for his MG42 as well as the reinforcing tabs on his Y straps. And I'm just going to pick out the leading edges of the reinforcing tabs and then I'm just going to run my paintbrush along the edge of the sling for the MG42 just to make that pop. So there we have our letters and the sling details highlighted. Now we're going to start highlighting some of the metallics and we're going to go back to some model colour oily steel. So we're going to start by picking out the leading edges of his entrenching tool. And what I'll do is I'll just streak it in one direction just to give it the idea that's been used a couple of times. You now he's dug a few foxholes, what have you, and it's been worn um, to a sheen or what to a shine with use. I'm also going to trace the edges of his uh, belt buckle. Now I kind of over highlight this so we're going to put a wash into that later on just to tone that back. And I'm also very carefully going to highlight some of the metal fixtures of his Y straps. I'm also going to work this colour along the edges of his MG42. I don't like over highlighting weapons too much. Um, I find when they're a bit too bright they become very unrealistic. So I'm just going to pick out just the leading edges and just keep my brush at like a 45 degree angle to it. And the same is going to be the same for his Browning Automatic or should I say his Browning High Power Pistol. I'm also going to take some of the colour and apply it to the leading brim of his helmet just to give a bit of wear and tear. And I also noticed there's two little buttons on the sleeves of his poncho and I'm just going to pick them out in the oily steel as well. You'll notice that I've left the ammunition belt untouched. I do not want to over highlight this in any way. Um, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It looks very realistic as, as is. And if you did highlight it, you run the risk of kind of overdoing that detail. And it becomes a bit of an eyesore then. And I'm just going to pick out the clasp on his combat knife. Again, very carefully with some oily steel just to make that detail pop. Because at the moment it's a little bit lost on the green backdrop of his poncho. So I'm going to take some Agrat's Earth Shade and I'm just going to apply it to the wooden uh, furniture of his weapon. And you can apply so, um, several layers of this if you wish to um, give you like a, a deep wood grain effect. 
and then I'm going to take some of our egg rats and mix a lot of water into this. I'm going to make a, a glaze, so it, sh it should be very transparent, almost like a tint of water. And you can see how transparent I've made it. And this is what I'm going to apply to the P dot camouflage to tone it all down and to give it a little bit of weathering. I'm also going to put this colour onto his entrenching tool and his belt buckle. Um, some of the areas I felt I went a little bit too bright with the metallics on. So with our washes left to dry for 24 hours, now it's time to add some of the final details to this model and we're going to start adding some weathering. And for that we're going to use some Tamiya Model Masters and Set A and we're going to use the Dark Mud effect. I'm going to use an old brush here and I'm just going to steeple on um, this pigment. The thing to bear in mind with this type of pigment is it's like a makeup. So if you do not seal this with a varnish, you could accidentally wipe this off. However, I find this weathering set is very, very good for figure weathering. I wouldn't be as inclined to use this for mo modeling um, armor or fighting vehicles, but for figures it's perfect, I find. And I'm just going to really apply a heavy to the his ankles, his knees, I'm going to work it right up in certain places, I'm also going to apply a bit of it to the top of his helmet. And with that, our model is ready for to be sealed with some matte varnish. I'm just going to put a little bit of air airbrush thinner and apply with my airbrush. And once our model has been sealed, our figure is finished. So I really hope you enjoy this video guys, and I hope you're having a lovely Christmas wherever you are in the world. So stay safe, happy modeling, enjoy your Christmas, and I'll catch you in the next video. I've been Shane, and watch out for those buses as always guys. Bye bye.